Hello guys, Flanker is here. In this video, I will share all up-to-date information about the trade skills aptitude system that we will have in the next patch. With this system, you will keep getting experience after reaching level 200 in any gathering, refining or crafting activity. Your experience bar will look like a circle divided into three equal parts. Upon reaching one of those three marks, you will get a parcel, crate or a package of specialized materials related to that trade skill. Apart from that, those containers will be a source of emerald gypsum that can be used to increase your expertise level. Now we will take a closer look at the rewards that players can obtain after opening those chests and let's start with crafting trade skills. The most valuable items that you will be able to get are first of all timeless shards that will allow you to craft or calcum weapons or armor with guaranteed attributes. They are tradable and can be sold. Secondly, you will be able to get patterns, that's some sort of a legendary schematic that will allow you to craft a guaranteed six 600 gear score item. They can be traded and sold too. Keep in mind that the amount of resources required will be three times more comparing to our Calcom items. Also, you will not be able to use Timeless Shard and Pattern at the same time. Let's take a look at Weaponsmithing, which is one of the hardest and most expensive trade skills to power level. It is definitely not going to be a way to get your daily gypsum because the amount of experience required to complete the full circle is more than 1.7 million. It's pretty much the same as leveling it from level 1 to 158. Parcels and crates have the same drop list that mostly contains various craft modes. The most useful out of them are Chunk of Featherstone, Shard of Crystallized AZ and three types of Whetstones. Apart from that, you will be able to get some epic resources and wiles of AZ, and if you are lucky, you might also obtain a timeless shard for weapons or shields. The drop list of the package of specialized weaponsmithing materials is the same, but in addition to all previous drops, you also have a chance to get patterns. I am not sure that it will be financially rational to spend a huge amount of gold to get timeless shards and patterns, but if you will need them, then it might be a good idea to craft powerful honing stones and sell them on the trading post to get your gold back. And also consider doing weaponsmithing townward missions that will also increase your territory standing level. Next one is gonna be engineering. As you can see the amount of experience required is the same. The drop list of parcel and crate mostly contains craft modes, same as weaponsmithing. The only difference is that you will also have a chance to get craft modes for tools for yield, luck and experience perks. In addition to that you can also get a rare craft mode for AZ extraction perk that previously could only be obtained as a drop in Lazarus Expedition. Apart from that, the drop list contains epic resources, wiles of Azit and timeless shards for hatchet, bow, musket and spear. The package of specialized engineering materials has the same drop list, but you can also obtain patterns for four different weapons. Getting engineering experience is easier than weaponsmithing because you can craft and sell tools, ammunition and proficiency boosters. But speaking of gypsum, there will be much easier ways to get it than engineering. Now let's talk about furnishing and this part will be interesting. A parcel of furnishing materials contains refined tier 5 resources and wiles of Azit, which is nice but not worth grinding. The drop list of a crate is much better because it contains resources, some furniture components and items that are required to craft basic trophies. Some of them, for example stack deck, are usually very expensive. Surprisingly, a package of specialized furnishing materials does not have components for major trophies in drop list, at least at this point of time, it contains resources, wiles of AZ and approximately 200 different furniture schematics. The most valuable out of them are schematics for tier 3 hope and dynasty storage chests that increase storage capacity by 400 and also you can get a very rare and super expensive schematic for tier 4 golden steel storage chest that gives 500 storage capacity. Even though furnishing requires more experience than engineering for example, it is still much cheaper. Players mostly use mahogany stain to power level furnishing, but after you reach level 200 you can craft pretty much anything. Trophies, chests, furniture, powerful incense, all these items can be sold on a trading post and even if you won't make gold out of it, you can still get experience. Now it's time to take a look at armoring, which also requires an insane amount of XP. Drop lists of parcel and crate are the same. Half of the items are craft modes that are mostly useless. Pretty much only chunk of featherstone for luck and chunk of consecrated iron for resilient perk might be worth some gold. Apart from them, you can also obtain some epic resources, wiles of AZ and timeless shards to craft armor. Keep in mind that you will need a specific shard not only for a particular armor slot, but also armor type. 
time, so crafting light or heavy helmets will require different timeless shards. A package of specialized armoring materials will give you the same items, plus there is a chance to get a pattern to craft a guaranteed 600 gear score piece of armor. In total, there are 45 different armor patterns. And same as with weapons, they will require 3 times more resources than their alternatives. If you want to farm armoring experience and do not lose money, then apart from the armor, consider crafting bags and doing townboard quests. Now let's take a look at Arcana that requires a little bit less experience. Job list of parcel mostly contains craft modes, pretty much the same as all other containers that we mentioned earlier. In addition to that, you can also get some wisps, resources, wiles of AZ, and timeless shards for magic weapons. Crate has the same drop list, the only difference is that you can also get essences. And finally, a package of specialized Arcana materials might give you patterns for a guaranteed 600 gear score magic weapon along with quintessences, and of course, it also contains all items from Parcel and Crate. Getting Arcana experience in general is not hard. Pretty much all you have to do is to craft potions, coatings and quintessences. There is always a high demand for consumables, so you might not only earn free experience, but also make some gold. Jewel crafting is a trade skill that can be very lucrative, but unfortunately the rewards for experience after level 200 are not great. In addition to that, 900,000 jewel crafting experience is a lot, even for company crafters. All three containers have the same drop list. Similar to other crates, it is mostly craft modes, but this time majority of them are for jewelry. There are actually some craft modes that might cost something for perks like luck, sacred, keen, blessed, health, and all all types of damage. Apart from them, you can also obtain Asmodium, Quintessences and that's all. I mean, seriously? No gems, no ingots, nothing really valuable except of Asmodium? Not really worth it in my opinion. Cooking is the next trade skill that we will look at. The amount of experience required is not high, pretty much you need to craft around 300 hearty meals to complete the aptitude level and get 3 containers. So it might be a fast and cheap way to get your daily gypsum, but the rewards from the containers are not really significant. For example, a parcel of cooking materials contains only herbs, salt, sugar and wiles of AZ. Not much to be honest, but at the same time it doesn't require much effort, so it seems to be fair. A crate has the same drop list and some extra tier 5 cooking ingredients. Sumptuous Rabbit is actually useful because it is required for cooking plus 40 constitution food. A package might be a little bit more interesting because its drop list contains all existing cooking recipes, including recipes for tier 5 food. At this point of time, they're not really expensive, but still can earn you some gold. Alright, so now let's take a look at 5 refining skills. Everything is very simple and similar. All refining skills require the same amount of experience and their rewards are pretty much the same for all loot containers. For example, after opening a chest for smelting, you will get Tolvium, Cinnabar, Obsidian Flux and Wiles of AZ. As you can see, the only difference between Parcel, Crate and Package is the quantity of Wiles of AZ. The rewards for smelting, woodworking, leatherworking and weaving are the same, just different legendary resources and refining components. Only stone cutting rewards are a little bit different. Apart from AZ and refining components, you can also get tier 5 gems, including pristine pearls. Previously, you could only obtain them by fishing and salvaging oysters. So in general, refining might be another easy way to get gypsum. Pretty much, you can just buy resources on the trading post, refine them for experience and then sell back. Last but not least, gathering scales. And before we start, there is one thing that you might actually consider doing right now. Now. Previously, the best combination of perks for tools was Luck, Yield and AZ Extraction. But as long as you will be getting experience after level 200 now, it might be a good idea to upgrade your tools to the highest possible gear score with Luck, Yield and Experience perks if you plan to get Gypsum daily by gathering. You will compensate the loss of AZ by getting vials from loot containers, but obviously it is up to you. Also, keep in mind that parcels, crates and packages that you get for gathering have the same drop list. The only difference? is the quantity of files of AZ. So, let's start with logging. The amount of experience is not very high, especially if you will focus on iron wood that gives the most experience, but there might be a serious competition for those trees, especially on high populated servers. So it might be a good idea to cut young and mature trees while you're waiting for ironwood to respawn. You can also watch a video on my channel with a very good ironwood farming route. When you will cut down enough trees to get a loot container and open it, you might get some barbed vine and wildwood, azot and craft modes. Draft of 
Ironwood Sap and Craft Modes for Logging Axe are useful and can earn you a couple of hundred gold. Harvesting requires less experience than logging, so if you know a good wire fiber route and have no competitors, then it won't take much time for you to reach the next aptitude level. Alternatively, you can find a good field of hemp near the Hermit Shrine in Windsward or go to the south of Morningdale to farm hemp and silk. After opening a loot container, you might get blister weave, scale cloth, az and craft mode. Usually there is a demand for draft of azalea nectar and craft modes for tool perks. Mining requires even less experience than harvesting, but hunting for oricalcum was never an easy process because of insane competition, so pretty much just get used to mine anything that you see – star metal, iron, lodestone, platinum, etc. Alternatively, you can just go outside of any settlement, mine boulders and refine them to stone blocks and bricks. Players buy them for townboard missions or to do high-tier stone cutting. The most valuable items from loot containers are obviously cinnabar and tolvium, chunk of featherstone, az and craft modes for pickaxes. All other craft modes from the drop list are pretty much useless. Out of all gathering skills, skinning requires the highest amount of experience, but that's actually not a reason to ignore it. Skinning is one of the easiest skills to power level because animals, especially bisons, give a lot of XP. In addition to that, it is not hard to find a decent spot and farm without any competition. The loot from skinning containers is pretty much the same. The only difference is that the craft modes are absolutely useless apart from those that are used to craft skinning knives. The last gathering skill is fishing. It requires less than 30,000 XP to complete the full circle, which is in fact not much at all, especially if you are fishing in hotspots. Fishing might be a fast and reliable way to get your daily gypsum without any competition, but at the same time I realize that not many players have 200 fishing. Loot from fishing containers is unfortunately the worst. Apart from AZ and useless craft notes, you can also get some baits, but that's about it. Fishing has always been unpopular since the nerf of treasure chests and a decent reward for aptitude levels could change the situation, but apparently not this time. I hope this video was interesting and helpful, if so, please leave a like or a short comment to help with promotion. Also, consider subscribing to the channel because I make videos on a regular basis. I am Flanker and I wish you luck in Eternum.